Okay, in this video we're going to have a quick look at Pythagoras' theorem. And it is going to be a quick look. It's not a, a thorough mathematical run through. Um, it's just a really, really quick recap. Okay, so first thing we want to be aware of is what's Pythagoras' theorem about. What it is not about is any sort of triangle that is not a right angle triangle. So this triangle here, we cannot use Pythagoras' theorem unless we split it into two. So we'll get rid of that. Pythagoras' theorem is all about right angle triangles. So the two triangles shown, the green and the blue, they're fine because we've clearly got a right angle in each of them. Now the key thing that you need to understand, even if you're having a bit of trouble with the equation or using it, the absolutely essential thing you need to know is what this C part represents. And this C part, and I know it says C squared, but the C part is always the longest side. Okay, or if you like, it's the hypotenuse. We can write this equation differently, but the thing that's squared and on its own, so in our example here, the C squared, that's the longest side, the hypotenuse. Okay, and it really doesn't matter what the A and the B are. They're the other two sides. It really doesn't matter which one's which, as long as you know that thing that's on its own and squared, in our case the C squared, that's the longest side, that's the hypotenuse. Okay, so we'll have a look at our two examples. We've really only got two cases that you're going to be asked to us to do. The first case is our green triangle. And in our green triangle we've got a side length of 8, a side length of 3 and a missing side length that maybe we'll call x. But we can see that that x is directly opposite the right angle and it's definitely the longest side. Just by sight we can see it's the longest side and that longest side will always be opposite that right angle. Okay, so in other words, we know that this x, even if it's labelled x on our diagram, is represented by c in our equation. That's the c side. That's our longest side. That's the hypotenuse. So if we were asked to work out that length, we're going to start with our equation as it is. We're going to start with c squared plus a squared plus b squared. So, as I said, it really doesn't matter which the a and the b are. If you like to label them, you could call that the a you could call that the B. So we can now do C squared is equal to A squared. Well, if we're saying that 8 is the A length, the A side, then we've got C squared is equal to 8 squared plus, and if we're labeling the 3 as the B side, we've got B squared becomes 3 squared. And we can simplify that to C squared equals 8 squared, well, that's 64 plus 3 squared, that's 9. And we can simplify again to c squared equals 64 plus 9, that's 73. So that tells us what c squared is, but it doesn't quite tell us what c is. So how do we find out c? Well, if we know c squared is 73, then c itself must be the square root of 73. Now we could leave our answer like that, or we could actually evaluate the square root of 73. So we can find out the square root of 73. That gives us 8.5 to one decimal place. So we've got C equals 8.5. And I didn't put any units on my diagram. They could be centimeters, they could be meters. But we know C is 8.5. Now let's just check back. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it's definitely now the longest side. Okay, we've got 8.5, which is greater than 8, is greater than 3. Okay, now let's do the triangle on the other side. Let's just change colour. I don't want to use, let's do some red. Okay, so this time, if we're going to label our sides, this time I notice that the side opposite the right angle and the side that's definitely by sight clearly the longest length is this 6. So in this triangle, this has to be our C. This is our hypotenuse. And again, it doesn't matter which way we label the other sides. We could make our unknown side, which may have been labelled with a Y in the question. We could make that our A. And we could make that our B. Really doesn't matter which the A and the B are. The A and the B are the two shorter sides. 
Okay, as long as we've got our C right, we're sorted. So again, we'll start with our A squared. Oops, pen. We'll start with our A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But this time we want to find out A squared. So we're going to do a little bit of rearranging. I think if we take away B squared from both sides, that will leave us on the left with A squared. And on the right, we'll get C squared minus B squared. So looking at, at our diagram above, we can see that A squared is equal to C squared. Well, that's the hypotenuse. That's our 6 squared minus B squared. And that's the side we labeled 3. So minus 3 squared. Therefore, A squared is equal to 36 minus 9. Or A squared is equal to 27. Okay, again, now that tells us a squared, but we want to find out a. So a is going to be equal to the square root of 27. And again, we could leave our answer as root 27, or we could evaluate that square root. So square root of 27, we get to one decimal place 5.2. So A is equal to 5.2. And again, no units on this one. Okay, let's check and make sure it makes sense. We've got 5.2, which is less than our hypotenuse. So that seems sensible. Now, if you're struggling to follow the rearranging and you just want to be able to get the right answer in terms of Pythagoras theorem, I just want you to look back at the main points. In question one, we needed to find the hypotenuse and if you need to find the hypotenuse you're always going to do this you're always going to add up the sum of the square of the other two sides the sum of the squares sorry of the other two sides so you're going to take short side number one and square it you're going to take short side number two and you're going to square it and you're going to add those two things together you're going to do this box here. Okay, then at the end, you're going to find the square root to get your answer for the hypotenuse. Now, in the case of triangle number two, the steps are nearly the same. Here, we weren't trying to find the hypotenuse. We already knew it. If you're trying to find one of the shorter two sides, you're always going to do this step. You're always going to find the hypotenuse, the other 6 squared, and subtract whatever the other square, sorry, whatever the other side that you know squared is. So you're always going to have a subtraction. And then at the end of that, you're going to square root again. Okay, so the only difference between these two methods is if you know you're looking for the hypotenuse, you're going to be adding the squares of the other two sides, then square root at the end. If you know you know the hypotenuse and you're finding one of the shorter sides, you're going to have a subtract. And then you're going to find a square root at the end. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, if it does, uh, have a go at these. Let's say uh, we've got a right angle triangle. We've got a side of 6. And we've got a side of 10. Not drawn to scale. Doesn't matter. Number two, we've got a right angle triangle, and we've got a 12 and a 5. Okay, have a go, see what you come up with. Pause the video for a bit now, I'll show you the answers in a second. Don't cheat. Okay, if you got 11.7 and 10.9, fantastic, well done. Both of my answers are to one decimal place. Okay, just a reminder, we had an addition there because we were looking for the hypotenuse, square root at the end. We had a subtraction here because we were looking for one of the shorter sides, square root at the end. Brilliant, well done.